you thankful that the Lord walks with you and talks to you? The Bible says he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Let's take our Bibles tonight and open together, please, the book of 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter number 2 tonight. Uh, a few things I want to mention before we get into the message this evening. The first is the importance of a Super Sunday evening. And I hope that everyone in here tonight will sign up to be part of something uh, on that evening. It's going to be a very special night, and you won't have to listen to me preach for a long time. Uh, but uh, all kidding aside, we can, we can join together uh, to fulfill the Great Commission. And what is, what is the one primary, well, there's two primary responsibilities uh, the local church has. Of course, the first is that the Lord has made us to be the pillar and ground of the truth. And we see that even in chapter 3 of 1 Timothy. But he's, in, in conjunction with that, he's instructed us, he's commissioned us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And what a great, what a great opportunity it is to, to, to join together. Uh, there's a job for everyone to do. Uh, no job is too big. No job is too small. Uh, there's nothing insignificant about anything that you'll engage in on Super Sunday evening. And so please prayerfully uh, go and, and sign up and be part of what God wants to do in and through your life on that evening. We're going to have several uh, several letters to, to prepare to send out uh, to, to people who've come to church recently. Um, we have neighborhoods going in all around us we need to get the gospel into. And if you just think about the responsibility God has given us. Um, I'm not sure we can really quantify it, but the Lord has moved people here. Do you realize that Columbus, Ohio is the fastest growing city in America. How many, of you, how many of you knew that? It is the fastest growing city in America. It's wild. There's a housing shortage here beyond compare. However, the Lord is moving people here from all around our country, from all around the world, and God is bringing them to our doorstep, and by God's grace, we need to get the gospel to them, don't we? And if you know, I believe that God. One of the reasons God brings people to our city is so we can reach them with the gospel. And I want to encourage you to be part of what God is doing uh, on in, in and through this church on Super Sunday night. And it's how many of you participated in the last? Was it last October we had Super Sunday? Wasn't it an encouragement? And, you know, we will meet together at 5 o'clock. We'll have a time of prayer and instruction. And then we'll divide up. We'll have a prayer group uh, praying for those who are going out. Maybe you say, well, Pastor, I, I, just, I just can't go door to door. That's fine. Not everybody can do everything, That's, but everybody can do something. And we can pray. Prayer is perhaps the most important thing you can do. And we can pray and ask God's blessing upon those who are out. You can pray for the letters that are being prepared and and uh, there'll be a group that's going canvassing, just putting gospel literature on homes. Uh, there'll be another group, uh, uh, we call them the prospectors. Uh, they'll be going door to door, uh, talking to people, asking for prayer requests, uh, praying for people at their doors with the intention, the desire to, to share the gospel with them. And so be praying for that. Uh, we'll have a care team, people taking care of, of the little ones, uh, so we can go out and, and uh, there's, there's folks that are going to be helping set up and prepare some refreshments because when we come back together, we want to share some testimonies and pray together. Uh, but it'll be a very special time. And so please sign up. Please be part of all of that. And no doubt God will, God will honor it. And we're looking forward to what the Lord has in store. The second thing I want to mention tonight is our need to pray. And, of course, we're in the midst of 30 days of prayer. Um, how many of you were uncomfortable last Sunday morning? Anybody uncomfortable in here? Nobody. Wow. Never mind. So nobody was, was hot. No one was crowded. Uh, we had a great problem last Sunday. And you know we had a great problem this morning, too. Uh, this room is continually being filled 
I remember just a couple years ago, even on Sunday nights, you would have half as many attending um, on a Sunday evening as we have now. We praise the Lord for God's continued uh, building of his church. We thank God for that. But I want you to pray for us. We look around, our building has many needs, doesn't it? Um, but perhaps our greatest need is a need for space. Uh, I believe we've, we've hit uh, a mark and uh, we need to pray and, and seek God's will, God's direction, and God's provision uh, for what he would have for us to do next. And we have, by God's grace, he's helped us put these master plans together. And we built the parking lot with the intention of expanding the facility. But we don't want to do it just to do it. Of course, there's a need. We're praying. We're seeking God. We want to follow God's leadership God's plan, God's timing in it all. But pray. Would you pray? Would you commit to praying uh, that God would give our church collectively wisdom and unity in, in how to address some of these issues? You know, our, our carpeting is worn out. It needs replaced. Um, you know, ladies, you know, we need to help you not have to use a bowling alley on Sunday morning in the restroom. Um, there's all kinds of things that, that, that are needed, but we, and so just pray that God would, would give order, give direction with this. And we're looking forward to what God would have. And we only, we only want his will, but I'm excited for what the coming days. Are you excited? Uh, have, I pray you've been incur as encouraged as I have been. I see God working and moving in the hearts and lives of people. Uh, God is answering prayer. God is stirring hearts. And the desire we have over these next three and a half weeks at this point is for the Lord to further prepare our hearts for the coming revival. How many of you have handy your prayer calendar? If you have your prayer calendar, hold it up. Everybody, if you do not have one, would you raise your hand? We'd like to please give you one. Uh, if, do you, if, you ha if you have need of one, would you just slip your hand up? We'll have some of our men. Thank you, men. Uh, give those to you. Of course, Brother Micah doesn't have one. Unbelievable. Oh, man. <laughs> All kidding aside, uh, I think he's probably got one on his desk, but he doesn't have one in his hand. He's got a whole stack of them. Yeah, he's, he's going to... For those of you who've started late, it's okay. Brother Mike has already made up for you. Uh, uh, but we want to be praying together. There's a great need for unity in prayer. And we're going to see that tonight uh, by way of the message. This evening, we may not, the service, the rest of the service may be a bit different than, than normal. We're going to preach from the Word of God tonight, but with the understanding that we're going to pray. Uh, that's how we're going to conclude the service tonight. Uh, we're going to pray together, and uh, whether we're going to make God's house a house of prayer. Uh, but this is our third day of the 30 days of prayer, and we're praying for people to be saved. Salvations is the key word here tonight. And just so you know, every other day, other than Sunday, uh, there'll be devotions recorded uh, and published on our social media platforms that will help promote 30 days of prayer. Something very simple, two, three minutes, um, but you can watch those and, and, you can, and you can pray. Just take a moment, uh, pray, seek God for personal revival. You know, you can't control the person sitting next to you uh, in the pew tonight, can you? You can't change the person's heart sitting next to you. You can't change my heart. I can't change your heart. But God can change their heart. And most importantly, God can change your heart. May I tell you, we're concerned with a lot of, for the, the spiritual health and well-being of, of people we know and love. But I want to encourage you, and maybe this sounds foolish, or maybe I'm wrong in saying this, I don't know. But be concerned for your own heart. Be concerned for you. Seek the Lord for personal revival. So often we're, we're quick to see the needs in the hearts and lives of other people, aren't we? Well, let's, let's just think about ourselves. 
Let's pray for ourselves. Let's pray for personal revival, for God to do a work in our lives individually. And uh, no doubt God, God is interested in that. But if you have your Bible, please stand with me tonight. We'll, be, we'll read together here, beginning in verse number 1 of 2 Timothy chapter number 2. The Word of God says, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all, to be testified in due time. Whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle, I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Father, we pray tonight <coughs> and recognize our need, uh, our need of Thee, Lord, we need your touch. We need revival. I need revival. And Lord, this evening again we come to the Word of God and, and seeking to lay some foundational truth, some principle that, that we can lay fast hold upon. Lord, that we can take with us, that, that will help us in our pursuit of Christ. And so, Father, tonight we pray that you would help us in this matter of prayer. Lord, that we would pray for the things we ought to pray for, the way we ought to pray for them. May we consider through whom we have access. Lord, we pray this evening that you would, again, open our eyes, that we may behold marvelous things from thy law. We're thankful for Christ. We're thankful for the provision of salvation. But God, we're so very glad to enjoy the privilege of prayer. So Father, we pray that you would teach us great and mighty things. Lord, help us, we ask. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> if you're in the habit of marking things in your Bible, I'd like to draw your attention to what the Word of God says in verse number 8. Paul writes, he says, I will therefore that men pray everywhere. Would you mark that statement, that men pray everywhere? I believe all of us would agree tonight to the fact that prayer is essential. Prayer is a necessity of the Christian life. Uh, prayer is spoken highly of throughout the Word of God. God's people, through all ages, through all times, have sought the Lord through the avenue of prayer. Aren't you thankful that you and I have the privilege of prayer? You and I, we don't have to come up with some man-made way. Aren't you glad? Man, aren't you thankful? I know I'm glad. Aren't you thankful there's not a, a pitiful booth placed in the foyer of the church where you have to enter into and ask me, <laughs> I find that comical, ask me to forgive your sin? I can't forgive your sin. That's blasphemous. I can't forgive your sin. I, I am not your access to God. Jesus Christ is your access to God. There's no man-made way. There's the Christ-made way. And you and I have been given this grand and glorious privilege of prayer. 
In Jesus' earthly ministry, we see an emphasis placed upon prayer. Quite often, he would resort to a solitary place where he would pray to the Father. He would instruct his disciples in Luke chapter 18, in verse number 1, he said, I would that all men pray and, and not to faint. God's desire is for you and for me to pray. Just a few weeks ago, uh, as we studied through the book of 1 Thessalonians, we came to the place where one simple verse, verse 17 of 1 Thessalonians 5 says, Pray without ceasing. You and I are to pray. And Paul, under the inspiration of God, again, here in this particular chapter of God's Word, makes the statement, he says, I will therefore that men pray everywhere. Whose will was this? Was this Paul's will or is this God's will? Well, this is God's word, therefore it must be God's will that men pray everywhere. Church, will you commit to prayer? Prayer is, of course, a necessity, we all agree, but it's also a discipline, isn't it? Prayer oftentimes becomes one of the most difficult things in which you and I can engage. The phone rings. The dogs bark. Your coffee spills. The kids run into the room. Somebody needs something. Your mind wanders. You fall asleep. Isn't prayer at times very difficult? But it's needed, isn't it? Yeah. Tonight as we look here in 1 Timothy chapter number 2, very simply, I'd like for us just to, to walk through this passage of Scripture in hopes of gaining something of, of encouragement tonight. And I'll notice three, three truths discovered here. Notice the first is what, we're to mention in our prayers. What we're to mention in our prayers. Look what he says in the opening verses of chapter 2. You ever wonder, oh man, I really don't know what to pray for. And there's a remedy for that. We'll look in Romans here in just a moment. But look what the Bible says. He says, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. If you know people, you will never be at a loss for what to pray for. Someone has a need. In a room this large, with this number of people tonight, I would dare say there are hundreds, if not thousands of needs represented in this room. Needs that only you and, and God know about, but a need no less important. And you and I, according to God, are to be in prayer for one another. Why is it important to pray? The Bible says, bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Prayer is important. We think of, of, of the instruction our Savior gave. If you hold your place and turn with me, all the way back to Matthew, Matthew chapter number 6. Uh, two, two times in, in the gospel records, we find what, uh, we, what we refer to as the model prayer. This, maybe I'm splitting hairs, but this is not the Lord's prayer. The Lord's prayer is found in John chapter 17. That is his high priestly prayer. This, here in Matthew chapter 6, is a model prayer. Some simple instruction concerning, or, uh, or instruction concerning what we're to pray for. 
He says in verse number 9, he says, after this manner. He's not saying to repeat these words. Of course, the Lord does not like vain repetition, does he? A vain repetition is, is meaningless. It's pointless. It's, but after this manner, he's pray, pray something similar to this. He says, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In Luke chapter 11, we find a similar, a similar uh, list of things for which the Lord instructs us to pray. But remaining here in Matthew chapter 6, we see just a, a very basic unfolding of what a prayer looks like. It begins with God, doesn't it? It begins with our worship of God. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Who is God? What are some of his attributes? Jesus says, hallowed be thy name. Well, we serve a holy God, don't we? Our God is holy. Our God is just. Our God is right. Our God is faithful and true. Consider the psalmist as he writes and describes the Lord as a shield, as a high tower, as a buckler, as a place of safety, the righteous runneth into it and is safe. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. He's the Alpha, Omega, the beginning, the end, the first and the last, which is, which was, when is to come. Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead bodily, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And, and we, we know God, and He's holy, and we can worship this holy God. You know what God loves to hear? He loves, the Bible tells us that He inhabits the praises of His people. Do you want, you want to meet with God? and Just praise Him. You want God to meet with you? Worship the Lord. Worship Him. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its worth. Sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. Tell him you love him. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Look what, Jesus, look what the Lord instructs us next. He says, thy kingdom come, verse 10. I pray for the Lord to come back. How many times do you pray for the Lord to return? Even so, come Lord Jesus. You know, recently, there's been a, a big, a big to-do uh, in media outlets about this red heifer that the children of Israel are said to be preparing to sacrifice. Whether they will or will not is beside the point. Do you know the basis or the reason behind the sacrifice? They believe that they can do works which will cause the, the coming of the Messiah. <laughs> Jesus is coming back in his time. That's right. Not in my time. That's right. I can do nothing to change that. But I can pray for his coming. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Look what he says there in, in earth as it is in heaven. I pray that God's will would be done on earth. And may I say, I believe God's will is being done on earth. 
We think of of man and the wickedness of man, and, and how can God allow it? Well, God has a will, doesn't he? And his will is being done. Is God sovereign? The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Uh, the Bible says that, that uh, the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. And as rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. The powers that be are ordained of God. And, and sometimes we, we sit back and we think, well, Lord, how? I mean, God is not pleased with what's going on. But may I tell you, some things have to be done for his work to be accomplished. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then he goes on, he says, in verse number 11, give us this day our daily bread. How many of you have needs? You have a need in your life? Pray for God to meet that need. Well, I don't like to pray for myself. Well, you have not because you ask not. How can... How will God ever meet that need if you never ask him to fulfill it? Ask God to meet the needs of your life. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Do you harbor any ill will toward anyone? Have you forgiven your debtors? The Bible says that we're to forgive one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven us. Forgive. What does forgiveness look like? Man, you and I, I wish we were able to forgive like God forgives. You know, we have something that we, God is omniscient. We have an all-knowing God has a greater memory than you and I can fathom but chooses to forget our sin. Buries our sin in the depths of the sea. Removes our sin from us as far as the east is from the west. You and I need to forgive. Unforgiveness is sinfulness. And God will not hear our prayer if we regard iniquity in our hearts, we must forgive. Forgive our debts. Boy, you know what? I'm a debtor. You know what I have done? Unintentionally, I have offended somebody. At some point in my life, I have offended someone. I've hurt someone. And I pray that they would forgive me. How many of you have ever, you need forgiveness from other people? You you step outside the boundaries. You you have faults. You you mess up. We, We need forgiveness, don't we? We'll forgive those others. Why, why, why would we beg for the forgiveness that we're not willing to extend? We must forgive. Verse 13 says, Lead us not into into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Boy, I don't want to sin. I don't want to sin. I pray that God would deliver me from the temptation of sin. That I would not be led into a situation where I would sin. That the Lord would bind the devil from my life. That he'd give me victory over Satan, over sin. Why? Verse 13 concludes, he says, For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. May I tell you, God's worthy. The Lord is worthy of your prayer. He's deserving of much more than that. Church, what do we mention? Look look back in 1 Timothy chapter 2. Understanding that Christ has given us a model of things for which to pray. Paul writes and he says, you know, he develops a, a list. 
How many of you have a prayer list? You know, one of the, the reasons we provide this calendar is to help you build a prayer list. The people I know who are Oh, disciplined in their prayer life, develop prayer lists. I was talking with someone this morning. We were talking about our old house here in Pickerington. I pray it didn't flood during the storms. It probably did, and I feel sorry for the people who bought it. But it hadn't flooded within the last five years, so I didn't have to disclose that. No, all, all joking aside, though, that house was perfect for us. When we moved to town 11 years ago, we had a list of things we were praying for. And God gave us what we asked for. And one by one, we were able to go down that list and check things off. Things that God did. Prayers God answered. The people God allowed us to meet people who came to Christ, one by one by one by one, we were able to mark these things off the list. And we rejoice in that. And Paul, he tells us here in verse number two, he gives a list, he says uh, in verse two, for kings, for all that are in authority. why Why do we put this list together here as a church? Our prayer bulletin. It's got the names of those in authority. We may not like the authority over us. We may not always agree with the decisions they make and how they govern our society. But when's the last time you you and I really prayed for them? Paul says, for kings, for all that are in authority. Why? That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. You know, I'm thankful for our founding fathers. I believe our founding fathers were men of great prayer. And God gave them victory over England. He allowed them to establish this nation on biblical truth which promotes for you and me a quiet and peaceable life. It allows us to to exercise our faith according to the dictates of God's word and our conscience. Without fear of, of outside persecution, imprisonment, taxation, or, or physical harm. We have the liberty to do that. Well, it was a great and novel idea that Paul was praying for, wasn't it? You know, in Paul's day, they did not enjoy that. But he told them to pray for it. That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Notice, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. This is good. This is something that God desires for you and me to pray for. Why? And who will have all men to be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. You and I, we pray for people to be, come saved. That's our prayer for today. For people to come to know Christ as their personal Savior. How else? Why would they allow us to have such liberty and freedom to worship God if their hearts aren't set to worship God. Church, we pray for these things. Notice the second truth we find tonight. Not only what to mention in our prayers, but secondly, Christ, the mediator of our prayers. Oh man, we find a jewel of a verse right here 
in verse number 5. The Bible says, For there is one God, amen, and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Amen. There's one God, and there's only one way to get to God. That's Jesus Christ. The word mediator means a go-between. Christ is our go-between. You and I, because we are sinful man, cannot come to God. But Jesus Christ is the mediator of the New Testament. He shed his blood for the penalty of our sin, rose in victory from the grave, is alive forevermore, and now he has ascended back to the right hand of the Father where he ever liveth to make intercession for us. And he is our great high priest. And at the moment of salvation, you and I enter the priesthood as well. And because of Christ, we have access to God. Let me say that again. Because of Christ, we have access to God. You're starting to catch on. Because of Christ, we have access to God. Mm. Isn't that good? What does that mean for you and me? Anywhere, anytime. There's nothing barring you from prayer. You don't have to get to a certain location. You don't have to be in a closet. You don't have to be facing east. You don't have to be prostrate on your face. You can pray anywhere, anytime. Amen. <laughs> and not only can you pray anywhere and anytime, but you can have confidence in that prayer. Look what the Word of God says in Hebrews, a familiar passage we, we reference often. Hebrews chapter 4, the Bible says in verse 14, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore, because of how excellent our Savior is, you know what the theme of Hebrews is? It's a great theme. It's Jesus is better. He's better than everything, isn't he? He's better than the law. He's better than Aaron. He's better than Melchizedek. He's better. Let us, therefore, come boldly unto the throne of grace, Amen. that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Friend, in your time of need, pray. Yeah. Pray without ceasing. You have not because you ask not. He that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I'm so very thankful for Christ, the mediator of our prayers. Notice the last truth we see here back in, uh, in, in 1 Timothy chapter number 2. It's found in verses 7 and 8. He says, Whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle, I speak the truth in Christ and lie not. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith in verity. Notice verse 8. He says, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. 
the manner of those in prayer. The manner of those in prayer. Without wrath and doubting. Don't pray spitefully. Pray without wrath. Don't pray that God would strike them dead. Well, 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 David prayed in precatory prayers. Well, the Lord says, vengeance is mine. I will repay, right. saith the Lord. Well, they need to, no, they need to get saved. Lost people do what lost people are going to do. A sinner does what a sinner does. And such were some of you. And sometimes, sometimes we still do those things, don't we? But without wrath and doubting. Don't doubt Have faith in God. He that cometh to me, or he that cometh to God, must believe that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Right. Have faith in God. Turn with me, if you would, please, to the book of James. James chapter 5, as we, as we come to the conclusion here, Notice what the Bible says in verse 13. James chapter 5, in verse 13, the question is asked, Is any among you afflicted? What's the solution? Let him pray. Here's another question. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. If there's a need in your life, pray. If everything's going swimmingly, praise the Lord. That's, those are the two attitudes of the Christian heart. Is an attitude, attitude of prayer or an attitude of praise. If you have a need, pray. If everything's great, praise the Lord. Amen. Give Him the praise. But he goes on and he says, is any among you sick? I'm sorry, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And notice what the Bible says in verse 15. And the prayer of what? The prayer of faith. The prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if, there be, if, if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. He says, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. Verse 16 says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You know what that means? The prayers of God's people work. You know that prayer works in proportion to your prayer? Well, I haven't seen an answer to prayer in a long time. Well, when's the last time you prayed? How long did you pray about it? Well, I prayed once. So it really wasn't effectual. And it wasn't fervent. Friends, we have to come to the point in our lives where we're willing, as probably the best Baptist preacher name I know, Johnny Pope. Right? Can you imagine? What a great name. Johnny Pope as a Baptist preacher, right? How ironic. But he makes the statement often that we must be willing to pray the price. Don't cease in your prayers. Pray, pray, 
pray and pray some more. Don't stop praying. Continue instant in prayer. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And if you haven't seen the answer, just keep praying. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. For whosoever asketh, receiveth. Him that seeketh, findeth. Him that knocketh, the door shall be opened unto him. Pray. The Bible tells us back in 1 Timothy chapter 2, or verse number 8, he says that men pray everywhere. That men pray everywhere. Tonight, we're not going to give a traditional invitation. But I would ask that you play along. Or maybe pray along, pun intended. Let's make God's house a house of prayer. Won't you divide up? Find someone you can pray with and pray for revival. Pray for one another. Pray that God's will would be done. But let's take a moment and pray. When you're done praying, you're free to be dismissed. Thank you.